Hello again and welcome back. What is a Jew? Part 2. Uh, if you're watching this one before the first one, please watch the first video before you watch this one. Um, get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me in your authorized version of the scriptures to Esther chapter 2. Esther chapter 2. Verses 5 and 6. Here is the very first mention of the singular word Jew. Okay? Esther chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Now, in Shushan, the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah king of Judah whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away. So right there verse 5 is the very first appearance of the singular reference to the word Jew. Now let's look at verse 5. Mordecai is the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. A Benjamite associated with Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is the, which is the city of the great king, given on to who? The Hebrews, Israel, the Jews. Okay? So, but paying attention to Benjamin, Benjamite. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 11. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, who have no confidence in the flesh. Confidence in the flesh, meaning something you may do or... In the fact that you are a direct descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from that line. Okay? Very interesting. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Look what he notice, uh, mentions. Circumcised the eighth day. And who is uh, circumcision given on to? Abraham. The Hebrew, who is a Jew. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. See, they were first Hebrews, but then... They were equated as being Jews because of the law. So when one today says Jew, scripturally, that is referring to those who were given the law, the Hebrew. Okay, let's continue. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, God's imputed righteousness to us. Through grace, through faith, okay? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Remember, they're not all Israel who are of Israel. 
because and Israel is someone who has power with God and man, okay? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. So you see that Mordecai was of the tribe of Benjamin, as Paul was, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, right? Okay, now go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 22 on to verse 29. Okay? Verses 22 on to verse 29 in he, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God, boasting himself. I am more, in labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons off, more, um, prisons more frequent, in deaths off, of the Jews. Five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness and watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I am not weak, who is offended, and I burn not. Go back where he says in par uh, verse 26, in perils by mine own countrymen, fellow Hebrews. But note the distinction. He says Jews, and he says, are they Hebrews? So am I, a Hebrew of the Hebrew. And if you watch the first video, Hebrew was first given unto who? Abram. Abram became Abraham. And Abraham begat Isaac, the promised son. And it is in Isaac, Thy seed shall be called. And Isaac, of course, begat Esau and Jacob. Esau have I loved. Uh, Esau, uh, Jacob have I loved. And Esau have I hated. Beg your pardon for that. Okay? God chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the fathers. And it is through that line of Shem that Jesus Christ came. Because there are those of Shem such as those who are in Japan and also in China, they are of Shem, but they are not of the seed of Abraham because God chose Abraham. Abram first, who became Abraham, denoting a change, okay? Okay, you with me? Now, go back to Esther chapter 2, okay? So, Hebrew, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, was Paul. And as we have seen, let me get back there. <laughs> as we see in Esther 2, verse 5, Now in Shushan the palace there was a certain Jew, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. So Benjamite, Paul, was a Hebrew of a Hebrew, of the tribe of Benjamin. So Benjamite, Hebrew, so Mordecai was a Hebrew, but he's referred to as a Jew. Interesting. Look at verse 6. Who had been carried away from Jerusalem with the captivity which had been carried away with Jeconiah, and, uh, with Jeconiah, king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. Now, in the uh, first five books of Moses, the Jews, the Hebrews, 
are warned that if they do not keep the law, if they do not go after the Lord their God with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their mind and with all their strength, that God would turn them over onto the enemies and kick them out of the land. Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 1 on to verse 14. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captives, and to the priests and to the prophets, and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. It was the Hebrews the Jews who were carried away captive from Babylon, or from um, Jerusalem onto Babylon. Those who are of Israel, descendants, physical descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? After that, Jeconiah the king and the queen and the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, and the carpenters and the smiths were departed from Jerusalem. By the hand of Elasa, the son of Shaphan, and Gamariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent unto Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. Whoa, hold on. Who caused the Jews, the Hebrews, to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon? Thus saith the Lord God of Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Prince with God and man. Okay? Unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. God caused it. Okay? Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. Take ye wives and beget son beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons, and give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And if you see the lost, uh, the next, uh, the last video, talking about how in Romans 11, all Israel will be saved, an expected end, that eventually all Israel will be saved. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go out and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord, and will bring you again to and will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Why did God cause his people to be carried away captive. He gave them statutes and laws to follow. And he warned them, if you don't do this, I'm going to disperse you and kick you out of the land. Okay? Going to put you throughout all the nations under heaven. And, for example, here in uh, Illinois, I know where there are three Jewish uh, synagogues. Okay? There are Jews spread out throughout the entire world. Okay? 
And you can find that why he dispersed them and uh, did this to his own people in Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter 32, and Leviticus chapter 26, where he says that he's going to scatter them among all nations. Why? Because they didn't follow the Lord their God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their might, and with all their strength, with their whole thing. See, the law was given unto the Hebrews, the Jews. Hence, someone, according to Scripture, who is a Jew, is those to whom were given the laws. And someone who is a Jew, according to Scripture, is someone who follows the law. Go to Esther chapter 8. Esther chapter 8. Esther chapter 8. Come on, fingers, beg your pardon. Esther chapter 8, verses 15 on to verse 17. Now remember, we looked at the first reference of, of Jew, okay? In Esther chapter 2, verse 5. Now in Shushan the palace, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jer, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Benjamin synonymous with Israel, one of the 12, 12 tribes of Israel, uh, from Jacob. Jacob is from Isaac. Isaac is from Abraham, okay? God chose Abraham, okay? He called Abram out from among his father and from among his kindred who were of Shem. So he could establish his, co his covenant with Abram himself, who would later become Abraham. So it is that line that God chose. See? Okay? Are you with me? But, so we see in Esther chapter 2, verse 5, Mordecai is a Jew. Who is a Jew? Uh, who is Mordecai? Of Israel, of Benjamin, of Jacob, of Isaac, of Abraham. Okay? But now go to Esther chapter 8. We will be reading verses 15 on to verse 17. Now here's something that a lot of people like to also distort. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white and with a great crown of gold and with a garment of fine linen and purple. And the city of Shushan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews, plural, had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every provenance and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness, a feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land became Jews. For the fear of the Jews fell upon them. They became Jews. So we have already looked at and established, okay? The first reference of the word Jew is in context to someone who is of Israel, okay? A Hebrew, Mordecai. When you look in scripture, Jew is always in reference onto who? The Hebrews. But right here you see and many of the people of the land became Jews. So, what does that mean? Hmm? What does that mean? Go to 1 Kings chapter 8, by the way. 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. The law, the covenants, the oracles of God were committed unto who? The Hebrews. Hence, to be Jewish, we're going to look at that, Thought I forgot that, didn't you? To be Jewish is someone who keeps the law, who follows the scriptural law of Moses. Okay? That's what it is to be a Jew. But, as we see, Jew is attributed first unto whom the laws were given. The Hebrews. See? You understand? So a Jew, according to scripture 
is someone unto whom the law was given because we've just seen in uh, Esther chapter 8, verse 17, and many of the people of the land became Jews. Followed the law of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sought to do what the Jews were doing, following their laws, adhering to their principles. Like we looked in the previous video in, uh, in Deuteronomy chapters 4 and 6, okay? That these laws were given them so that nations, uh, other nations was like, wow, what uh, nation has God so great, a God so great and near to them as you do? Why? Because of the laws that were given unto the Hebrews. Hence, to be a Jew is associated with what? The law. So when many of the people of the land became Jews, they started what? Started adhering themselves unto the law. Go to 1 Kings chapter 8, like I told you, verses 41 on to verse 43. 41 on to verse 43 in 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 41 on to verse 43. Moreover, this is Solomon given his sermon. Moreover, concerning this stranger that is not of thy people Israel. This is a different dispensation. Under the law. A Gentile, a stranger, yes, could have been saved under the law. But they had to convert to the laws of the Hebrew, the Jew. Hence, they had to become Jews go under the law. Okay? Because remember, Israel was called out and called to be an example unto the heathen around them. Very similar unto us, the Church of the Living God. How we have been called out of the world to be a witness unto this lost world comprised of both Jew and Gentile. See? But, Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for that all people of the earth may know thy name to fear thee as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I have builded is called by thy name. What does this mean? A stranger, someone who is not in, of Israel, to um, come to the Lord had to do the precepts of the law, go to the temple to become a Jew. What is a Jew? Someone who has been given the law. Who is the law given on to? The Hebrews. Okay? Do you get it? So a Jew is someone unto whom the law was given, the Hebrew. But to become a Jew means to go under the law. Okay? Okay? Are you with me? Okay? Now, go to Isaiah chapter 56. Like I said in the previous video, Jew singular is um, referenced 32 times. But we only needed to look at the very first reference to where Jew is linked on to. But then again, like, uh, like we just said in Esther chapter 8, how does one become a Jew if they're not of Israel? They had to go under the law. Okay? They had to follow the precepts of the law. Okay? Okay? Remember, this is a different dispensation. Eternal security was not there. Yes, grace was there, but it was faith and works. You wanted to be right in the dispensation under the law. You had to have faith and works. What works were those? The works of the law, people. Okay? The works of the law. It was not this dispensation. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Okay? Okay? Talk about that in the previous video. You need to watch the previous video. Okay? 
But now go to Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. Okay? Come on. Isaiah chapter 56. So see, someone could become a Jew who is not of Israel. But becoming a Jew meant what? Number one, the Jews in Scripture, according to Scripture, is equated onto what? Israel, the Hebrews, Isaac, Jacob, Abraham. Okay? And in order to be right with the Lord in the dispensation of the law, it was faith and works. What works were those that they needed to keep? Isaiah chapter 56. Thus saith the Lord, Keep ye judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So, faith and works under the law. What were those works? <laughs> the works of the law. Okay? The Levitical law. And the, uh, the, the law of Moses, the Ten Commandments. And you kept those Ten Commandments by the Levitical law. Because they were the priests. They made the sacrifices and stuff like that. Okay? So, in order for one to become a Jew... According to scripture, you go under the law. Okay? Let's continue. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So a stranger who joined himself to his people, joined himself, look at that, joined himself to the Lord. The Lord chose Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Hebrew, Israel. The stranger who had joined himself unto the Lord had to do the same as Israel. Faith and works. What were those works? The works of the law. Who is the law given unto? The Hebrews. That's what a Jew is. Someone who is under the law, who keeps the law. The scriptural law, not the Talmudic, nor the Kabbalistic, nor the Catholic. The scriptural, which we don't have to keep today. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. It says eunuchs, yes. But in the previous verse, stranger and eunuchs, okay, who separate themselves unto the Lord and take hold of my covenant. What covenant was that? The covenant given unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? The covenant of the law. See, for someone in Scripture to be a scriptural Jew, got to take hold of the covenant. What covenant? The Old Testament law. Do you see? That's what scripturally, scripturally defines what a Jew is. And the law was given unto whom? The Hebrews. Who are the Hebrews? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, let's continue. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now look at this. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Okay, strangers, not of Israel. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. Do you see that? Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Do you see that? Scripturally, a Jew is someone that what? Keeps the Sabbath and takes hold of his covenant. What covenant was that? The covenant that he gave unto Israel. The law. The law of Moses. The Levitical law. In order to keep the law of Moses. Of sacrifices and ordinances. Kosher and stuff like that. Okay? 
So scripturally, a Jew is someone who is what? Taketh hold of the covenant of, of the Lord and keeps the Sabbath. And, you, and see, we looked at this in the previous video, dear friend. You don't keep the law today in order to be saved. Okay? The works of the law, which Paul refutes, you don't need to keep them today. To the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Okay? The law was fulfilled in Christ Jesus when he shed his blood on the cross, died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. He covered sin with his blood while the uh, blood of bulls and goats uh, uh, only covered them, excuse me, while the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed. Beg your pardon for that. Beg your pardon for that. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth the way all sin while the blood of bulls and, uh, bulls and goats only covered them. Beg your pardon for that oopsie there. Okay? But again, we're looking at the proof of it. Okay? You wicked anti-Semitic devils. Someone who is a Jew, according to the scriptures, not according to your own traditions, but according to the scripture, someone who is a Jew is someone who is under the law and has taken hold of his covenant. And guess what? You have to study to show thyself approved unto God, to be a workman who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This dispensation, which we talked about in the previous video, you don't keep the law to be saved or stay saved. Hey, you want to keep the law? Go, go right ahead. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Go ahead. Um, the giving of animal sacrifices has been done away with, so be careful with that. But if you want to stay kosher... If you want to not mingle with certain things, if you want to do the washing of cups if and stuff like that, fine, go ahead. But it's not necessary for your salvation to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, and you don't have to do it to stay saved. Okay? Let's continue this. Verse 7 in Isaiah chapter 56. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer, Talking about strangers who are not of Israel, not Hebrews, who join themselves unto the Lord and take hold of his covenant like they did in Esther chapter 8 when they became Jews. Okay? Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, and mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. See, under the law, for someone who was not of Israel, to be right with God, had to come under the law and take hold of his covenant and keep his Sabbaths, meaning faith and works. He had to do the things of the Levitical law and keep the Ten Commandments, which man cannot do. That's why the animal sacrifices were there to cover where the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses. Okay? Let's continue. The Lord God which gathereth the outcasts of Israel... Prince with God and man, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, others not of Israel, besides those that are gathered unto him. Ah, ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Yea, all ye beasts of the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Talking about those of Israel, Dis doctrinally and dispensationally, this was on to the law. This is written on to the Jews, the Hebrews, okay? Because a Jew is someone who is under the law, who takes hold of his covenant and his Sabbaths. And who were the covenants and Sabbaths given on to? The Hebrews, the physical, actual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Verse 11. Yea, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they. I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. See at this time, and you read also about this in the uh, Minor Prophets, about how the priests, the upper echelons of the Jewish people, those who were given the covenants, 
okay, who were keeping the covenants, were supposed to keep them. See, they weren't keeping the covenants with their whole heart. They weren't keeping the whole law with their heart. They were just doing it mechanically, like the Pharisees and Sadducees were, okay? With their mouth, they shewed much love, but their heart wasn't there, okay? Someone who is a Jew, according to the scripture, is someone who takes hold of the covenants of God, the covenant given unto Israel, and takes hold of his Sabbaths. But see, today, the law is not necessary for salvation or to be saved. Paul talk, read the book of Galatians. He talks all about it. Okay? And there are those today, the Seventh-day Adventists, the uh, um, Hebrew Roots Movement, the Hebrew, the black Hebrew Israelites, the um, uh, British Israelites, Shepherd's Chapel, with their satanic serpent seed doctrine, okay? You don't keep the law to be, stay, to be saved or, save, or stay saved, okay? To the Jew first and also to the Gentile, all right? Now, go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Who is Jesus Christ? Melchizedek in uh, Genesis, uh, that, that was the Lord Jesus Christ. A precarnate form of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like with Jacob uh, wrestled with a man who is God, uh, the precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because remember, we, you and me, are made in the similitude of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. God has a spirit, soul, and body. Spirit is the Holy Ghost. The soul is God the Father. The body is the Word made flesh. You know, in 1 John 5, 7, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Hebrews chapter 7. Verses 11 on to verse 22. Therefore, if, excuse me, therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Under what? The priesthood of the Levites, their Aaronic priesthood. The law. To be a Jew. According to scripture, as someone who took hold of the covenants of the Lord given unto Israel by, uh, through the Levitical priesthood and kept the Sabbaths. And these were given unto who? The Hebrews. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there is made a of necessity a change also of the law because it was fulfilled. The law is going to return during the time of Jacob's trouble and during the kingdom of heaven. Yes. But today, in this dispensation, <laughs> no, you don't need to keep the law to be saved or stay saved, okay? For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing, Concerning priesthood. But he did mention about the lawgiver. The lawgiver of Judah. You read the blessing of Moses in the final chapters of Deuteronomy. Okay? And also of uh, Jacob unto his sons in the final chapters, nearing the final chapters of Genesis. Okay? It was prophesied that God would provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, and God chose Judah, not Levi. Okay? 
And it is yet far more evident that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal, fleshly commandment, but after the power of an endless life. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. And that Melchizedek in Genesis, uh, after the similitude of Melchizedek, and it says in verse 16, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. So that tells us that Melchizedek in the Old Testament in Genesis, um, who blessed Abraham, or Abram, excuse me, had an endless life. Why? Because that was a precarnate form of our Lord Jesus Christ. That was God our Father in, in, uh, as the priest uh, Melchizedek. That's what that means. Okay? For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. Yes, because the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin, only cover it. The blood of God shed on the cross, cleansed, got away, took away sin. Okay? But see, you got to go to him on his terms. Broken and contrite. Fear the Lord. Call upon his name. Okay? Let's continue. For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And insomuch as not without an oath he was made priest. For those priests were made without, for those priests were made without an oath. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, we already have seen, had an endless life. So in Genesis, Melchizedek was God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Jesus is that priest of Melchizedek in the Old Testament, Melchizedek, that was Jesus Christ, God our Father. That was God, okay? But the law changed. Why? Because it was fulfilled. It's coming back during the time of Jacob's trouble and in the kingdom of heaven, okay? It is coming back. But... Today, in this dispensation, where you are saved by God's grace, through faith, not you save yourself by you believing. You're, you're a thief and a robber because you're going up some other way. You're not going through the door. The way God chose, the cross, which is brokenness of self-righteousness, contrition, godly sorrow, because it's your fault that he died for your sins, and godly fear. The fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord, when you are broken and contrite, you will call upon the Lord. And may he save you. And when he saves you, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Because he seals you. Because remember, circumcision was unto whom? Abraham, the Hebrew, who are the Jews. And the Jews are who? Those who keep, the, who uh, take hold of the covenants? And his Sabbaths. And who were the Sabbaths and all the covenants and all the laws given unto? Israel, a prince with God and men. Hebrews, descended of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Do you get it? Okay. Now, go to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. No, when the Lord saved me over 13 years ago, this about the Jew was the very first thing that he opened my understanding onto when the Lord first saved me over 13 years ago. This was one of the, right away, this was the very first thing that he shooed me that he gave me understanding the grasp was about the Jews, the Hebrews, that they are the apple of his eye and that he has not forsaken them and that we are grafted into his tree. 
this was one of the very first things. I mean, the first thing, the big thing that he showed me, taught me first and foremost, was about his people, the Jew, which we are grafted into. Okay? Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 7. Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increase the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his anger, uh, the rod of his oppressor, excuse me, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel for fire. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. The Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Who is this talking about? This is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. So, wait a minute. Jesus is the Father? Yeah, that satanic wicked trinity, that, that's, that's devilish, that's satanic. God is spirit, soul, and body. Jesus Christ is the Father. Okay? Let's continue. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, King of the Jews. King of the Jews. And scripturally, the Jews are equated unto who? Israel. Because Israel are who? Hebrews. And whom? Again, I'm going to drill this into your head till you get it. Who are the laws, the covenants, and the Sabbaths given unto? Uh, the Hebrews. And someone who keeps his the Lord's covenant that he gave unto Israel and takes hold of his Sabbaths, um, that's someone who is under the law. That scripturally is someone who is a Jew. That's why in Esther you see people became Jews. And you see mention of people who are strangers who take hold of his covenant and his Sabbaths, which were given unto the Hebrews. Hence, a Jew is someone who takes hold of the covenants and the Sabbath, the law of the Lord, according to Scripture. Not according to what Catholics and all these others like to redefine what the law is. Even the Jews who are in Israel today with their Kabbalistic and Talmudic laws. Okay, let's continue. Let's read verse 7 again. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Because he's priest um, after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. God's judgment it's not a death sentence. Well, that's insane. God's judgment is not a death sentence. God's judgment is his justice. And judging you, making you aware of your wicked deeds. And that's not always a death sentence. So, the father, this prince of peace, the son who is going to be ruling on the throne of David in Jerusalem. Meaning he's what? King of the Jews. Who are the Jews according to scriptures? Are those who are under the law. Who was the law given to? The Hebrews. Could someone who is not of the Hebrews? The Hebrews linking onto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Uh, could someone who was not a Hebrew uh, become a Jew? Yes. How did they do that? By taking up the, uh, the covenants and the Sabbaths, meaning going under the law. Okay? That's what a scriptural Jew is. That's what a Jew is. Okay? Now go to Isaiah chapter 42. Isaiah chapter 42. Verses 13 on to verse 25. Isaiah chapter 42, verses 13 on to verse 25. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools. And I will bring the blind by the way that they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back. They shall be greatly ashamed that trust in graven images. That say to the molten images, ye are our gods. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as... Who is blind as he that is perfect, and blind as the Lord's servant? Lord's servant. Hmm. Israel was to be the Lord's servant, the Lord's representative on earth during the Old Testament, under the law. He called them out so that other nations would say of Israel, the Hebrews, the Jews, because of the law of the Lord. What great nation is this that has God so nigh them with such great laws? Okay, we looked at that in the previous video. Okay, so it was the law of the Lord. Okay, Israel under the law, under the Old Testament, under the law, was called out to be the ensample unto the world about them. People could get saved and be right with God under the law, but they had to go through Israel. They had to go under the law. They had to become Jews. Being a Jew is someone who is under the law, the scriptural law of Moses, and keeps it. The scriptural law, not the Talmudic nor the Kabbalistic. Definitely not the law of the Catholic, but the scriptural. Okay? That is what a Jew is. That is what a Jew is. Okay? And the laws, the ordinances, the oracles were given on to who? Again, Israel, who are Hebrews. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 20. And like I said, Israel was called out to be that servant. Okay? Seeing many things, but thou observest not. Open the ears, but he heareth not. Opening the ears, but he heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Talking about our Lord Jesus Christ. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Our Lord said, uh, Do not think that I have come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law. Make it honorable. Why? Because Man at his best state cannot keep the law perfectly. The Ten Commandments. No one at their best can keep them perfectly. No one can do that. That's God's perfect requirement. And those laws were given unto us to show us that we cannot be right with God ourselves. That we cannot keep his perfect commandments. Hence, it's faith and works under the law because the blood of bulls and goats, they covered sin. But the blood of God washed away sin. Bet you pardon my nose of this. Okay? 
Okay. And where it says here, the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay. Uh, he magnified the law, made it honorable. He kept the law. He never. God can't sin. Okay. God cannot sin. And God in flesh was tempted. The flesh was tempted. God himself was not because God cannot sin. But see, the flesh was tempted. But he never sinned. And all that stuff, he kept the law perfectly and he made the law honorable. Why? Because he gave the ultimate sacrifice for sins. His own blood shed on the cross. And he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures which brought in this dispensation which you and I are in, which is coming to a close. Verse 22, But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none will saith restore. And yeah, the Jews of today, okay, Israel, they are attacked and hated. <laughs> and also, too, Catholicism is doing their best to make the Jews, the Hebrews, look like villains. When I proved in other videos that it is impossible for the Jew, the Hebrew, to be the head power today. They are the tail. The Gentiles, they are the head. The Gentiles are those who are not of Hebrew, are not Hebrews. Okay? Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. And the law was given unto the Hebrews. And keeping the law the scriptural law, the Ten Commandments, and the Levitical law, and stuff like that, that is what made you a Jew. Okay? And all that was given on to the Hebrews, Israel. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham didn't receive the law. That's that line. Okay? But the law was given on to who? Israel. And Israel is the descendant of Abraham and Isaac. Okay? Therefore he hath poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle, and it hath set him on fire round about, yet he knew it not, yet he knew not. And it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. The Jews who went through the Holocaust, the Nazi Holocaust, they were brought back to Israel, their own land in unbelief, um, correlating with Ezekiel chapter 36. And you look at it today, Israel today, they are doing virtually the same identical thing that they were doing right before the Nazi Holocaust of World War II. With their Talmud, their Kabbalistic magic. And them doing evil, that good may come. That they're doing purposely evil to bring about their Mashiach. Go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, 6 and 7 is describing to you what it will be like in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? In the Sermon on the Mount, you see faith mentioned one time in the form of a rebuke. This was our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jews. Those who were given the law. The Hebrews. But Matthew chapter 5 verses 17 on to verse 30. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. And he fulfilled it by shedding his blood on the cross dying, being buried, and being rose again the third day according to the scripture. 
we, we just look, we just looked at it. He made the law honorable. Okay? For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And he fulfilled it. He fulfilled it. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven is the actual physical literal kingdom of Jerusalem where our Lord Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from as king of the Jews. Okay? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, Pharisees, take tradition above scripture. Modern Pharisees, Catholics. Okay? Scribes, Catholic Bible writers, translators. Okay? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Ye have heard that it, ha that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall be in, and whosoever, sh and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause... You look in the NIV, the ESV, the New American Standard, whatever, the New Revised Standard Version, the, uh, what is that, the uh, New American Bible, St. Joseph's, the New Revised Standard Version. They take out without a cause. You can be angry. You can have righteous indignation, that's okay. But see, the Bibles take out without a cause. So meaning if anyone gets angry, you're in sin. No, there has to be a cause. Because they take this out and when Jesus was angry, they're calling Jesus a sinner because he was angry. Because, but they take out without a cause, see. You're not using the scriptures following me along? Where is without a cause? It's not there. Your Bibles come to you from Rome, the enemy of all mankind. But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be danger of the judgment, shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Rekha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Why is he saying this? Number one, it's with, uh, without a cause. You need a cause. But number two, um, he's saying this because the king will be present on earth. So we, went during the kingdom of heaven, and we, the church of the living God, are coming down with our Lord Jesus Christ at his second coming, okay? But during the kingdom of heaven, God's going to be on earth, ruling on the throne, Okay, if someone sins and messes up, they're going to have to deal with God personally, like right now, because he's at Jerusalem. They're going to have to deal with God. You, uh, in the kingdom of heaven, um, yeah, that's the difference. We're not supposed to be angry without a cause. We're supposed to, you know, watch ourselves. Why? Because our God is on the throne. The lawgiver, the king of the Jews is on the throne. He's going to be judging, and people are going to have to answer to him personally. Personally! During the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years. Okay? That's why he's saying these things. You know? For you to go for today to preach pacifism, that's satanic. That is devilish. That is ecumenical. That is ecumenical. The reason why our Lord... Uh, it seems that he's uh, telling people to be pacifists, which he's not. Why is that? Because he as lawgiver is going to be on the throne, ruling as king in Jerusalem during the kingdom of heaven. That's why. Okay? It's not like this dispensation today. 
Depraved indifference is a sin, my boy. And you preaching against, you preaching that, that's a sin. Be careful. That's Catholic. Verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, the altar is going to be back, yeah, because the law is going to be back during the kingdom of heaven. And there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. Go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Why? Whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. And who is the judge? Our Lord Jesus Christ, as King of the Jews, Son of David. See. And the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Okay? Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt not by thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. That's why he's telling us in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, love your enemies. See, today we love our enemies by telling them the truth. And in the Sermon on the Mount, he says, if someone hits you on that side, turn the other side. Okay? Why is that? Because the judge, the lawgiver, God is going to be there present on the earth. Okay? And during the kingdom of heaven, people, friends, it's all works. You don't need faith when you can go and see God in the flesh sitting on his throne in Jerusalem as lawgiver. You do not need faith for that. You're going to be able to see him. Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? You're trying to mingle doctrine for the kingdom of heaven with today, which is something these replacement theology devils do. These, uh, you know, the black Hebrew Israelites, those who are of the Jews, who are into Kabbalistic magic and the Talmud, Okay? Judaizers. Okay? Trying to get you under the law. Today we don't keep the law. This, the Sermon on the Mount, is for our instruction in righteousness, yes. Doctrinally, it does not apply for us people. Understand that. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. Ye have heard that it was said of them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. Yeah, today our instruction in righteousness, I'm a married man. If I'm looking at another woman oogling after her, I'm in, I've sinned. I've already committed adultery with her in my heart. See? But see, under the kingdom of heaven, under this, the consequences are going to be severe. Why? Because it's all works. And you will pay accordingly during the kingdom of heaven. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. So, what does this mean? What does this mean? He's not telling you to literally cut off your hand, gouge out your eye, and cut off your foot. No, separate yourself from things like put no wicked thing before your eyes. Touch no unclean thing. Don't go to places that are sin, that will cause you to sin, see. But see, this is for the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. Eternal security is not going to be there because it's by works. If you mess up and don't offer an offering or go to the Lord or something like that. See, that's why we, his servants, during the kingdom of heaven, are told to, be, to seemingly look to be passive. Why? Because anyone who sins during the kingdom of heaven is going to have to deal with Jesus Christ himself. 
Beware of trying to take instruction in righteousness and turn it into doctrine. Beware. That's what Catholics do. Okay? Now go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 on to verse 39. Think not that I am come to send peace on the on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Oh, I just lost my pay. Okay. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. And of course, that's reference to Micah chapter 7, verse 6. Okay, look that up on your own time. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. Find the best things of this world. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep to the slaughter. See, Jesus Christ has to be everything in your life. He has to be number one. And if something other than our Lord Jesus Christ takes the place of that, you're in sin. That's what that's talking about. And in, during the kingdom of heaven, <laughs> yeah, it's all works. Okay? It's all works. <laughs> the king has to come first. The king has to come first, people. Do you understand that? I hope you do. Now go to Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 on to verse 53. Uh, you know what? That's, that's virtually the same thing. But we're, we're, we're going to read it again. We're going to read it again. Okay? John chapter... Uh, Luke. Luke chapter 12, verses 49 on to verse 53. Virtually the same thing that we just read. I'm going to look at this though again here. Okay, I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I, if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straight until it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, or rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So, adhering to Jesus Christ according to the scriptures, there is going to be an inevitable dividing in your family. I don't know of anybody of the church of the living God who doesn't have family problems. I don't know of any. <laughs> Just recently, a brother from Croatia was making mention about his family problems. Praise the Lord. Uh, he answers prayers for that. But um, yeah, yeah. We of the church of the living God have problems with our related family members. Why? Because we adhere our lives to the scriptures. Go to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Verses 10 and 11. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own. And his own received him not. Uh, his own. Oh, those of the world. No. The Jews. The Hebrews. We already looked in the book of Hebrews. Uh, Hebrews chapter 7. That our Lord sprang from Judah. The Hebrews. And unto the Hebrews were given the law. 
And a Jew is someone who keeps the law, who takes to themselves the covenants, uh, the covenant given unto Israel, and the Sabbaths. Okay? Okay? That's what a scriptural Jew is. Now go to Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, for those of you who are saying about 10 and 11, oh, that's not talking about how Jesus came on to the, the Hebrews, the Jews. No, no, no. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Uh, verse 3. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He came to the lost sheep of Israel, the Jews. The Jews are who? Scripturally Hebrews, because the law was given unto the Hebrews. Someone who was not a Hebrew of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob could become a Jew, but that meant going under the law, and the law was given on given on to the Hebrews. Hence, scripturally, Jew is equated with the Hebrew. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. And you look at the crucifixion of Jesus. They didn't want their king. <laughs> They're like, come down from the cross now and we'll believe you. Because the Jews require a sign. And remember, in Scripture... Those who are called Jews are equated onto the Hebrews because the Hebrews were given the law, the oracles, the promises. We as Gentiles, who are not Hebrews, who descend from directly descend from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay, we are grafted into their tree. The Japanese, the Chinese. The American Indian, they descend from Shem. They do. The American, Native American Indian in America, like the Klefasuwasu tribe, okay? The Japanese, the Chinese, they are descended of Shem. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But they are not descended of the line from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the line of the Hebrew. See, hence, it's Shem's tent. It's Shem's tent. But there are those of Shem that are Gentile, meaning not of the direct line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But see, today, by grace through faith, you can be grafted into that tree and be of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by grace through faith. See. And these wicked devils out there who hate the Jews are doing everything they can to distort that. But like I said, you read the testimony of our Lord being crucified. They didn't want him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Received him not. Okay? Now, let's go to one part in Scripture that many of you were probably waiting for. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 26. John chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 26. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had, 
When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. Verse 2 is important. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. I remember seeing documentaries and hearing people that Jesus actually himself physically baptized people. Though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. <laughs> Let's continue. He left Judea and departed, uh, departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. A lot of you might have had, uh, be a little confused about the Samaritans. Um, they, are, they were of Shem, but they were not of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay? That kind of thing. Okay? They might have been, but, but, beg your pardon, but, let's keep reading. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, and we, we, we've already looked at, that yeah, he will make the law honorable. Uh, Jesus Christ, God our Father, definitely kept the law. He was a true Jew. He kept the law, and he kept it perfectly. You see. How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews, those who keep the law, have no dealings with the Samaritans, who didn't keep the law. See. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have, would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank thereof himself, and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water shall but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Very quickly, forgive me for that error about what I said about the Samaritans. Um, I, 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 I misspoke on that. Please forgive me about that. I was wrong about saying that. Um, when it comes to the Samaritans, you got to look that up on yourself on your own time. Okay, But as we see here, the Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. And this woman called Jesus a Jew, who definitely was under the law and kept the law. Okay, Verse 15. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that saidest thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Check this out. This is important. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor, in, nor yet in Jerusalem Worship the Father. See, because the Samaritans trace back to that division where, uh, what was that guy's name? Um, uh, Jeroboam, the son of, um, uh, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. When the kingdoms were divided, 
because of Rehoboam and stuff like that, because he didn't listen to the counsel of the older men, but he can listen to the counsel of the younger people, and they split aside. And Samaria, the calves that Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, made to make Israel to sin, okay? So that was a mix, pretty much, you can say. So Samaritans, the Samaritans were over there where they had to fake the, their calves and stuff like that which came about from Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Well, Judah, along with Benjamin, were here, okay? There were two tribes, and the ten tribes of the north and the two tribes of the south uh, uh, appropriated with Jerusalem and whatnot, okay? So, but keeping that in mind, see, where he gives the distinction, uh, or the woman gives the distinction in verse 20, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. What does that mean? That's referring on to the split of the kingdoms where uh, uh, Benjamin and Judah under, Jerobo uh, under Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and where Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, went off with ten tribes and made themselves calves, kind of counterfeit of the actual... Um, law and stuff like that that's in Jerusalem. He made them calves and set them up in Samaria. See, that's what that's referring to. Okay, let's continue. Reading verse 21 again. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation is of the Jews. Jews are those who keep the law. And Jesus Christ, God our Father, was born in the flesh of the tribe of Judah, making him what? A Hebrew. Jesus Christ kept the law, made it honorable. He fulfilled it. For salvation is of the Jews. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. What does this mean? It does not mean that the keeping of the law is salvation. For salvation is of the Jews. The law, the commandments, the ordinances, okay, the oracles, the covenants, the Sabbaths were given unto who? Israel. The Hebrews descended from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Okay? So when he says salvation is of the Jews, what is he referring to? Those who are under the law. He's referring unto the Hebrews. So when our Lord said, says, for salvation is of the Jews, he's talking about the Hebrews because the Hebrews were given the laws. And he came from the tribe of Judah. He himself was a Hebrew. And Jesus Christ is salvation. And he kept the law. Do you get it? Do you get it? And see, you have Catholicism. Who they don't openly say we're Jews. But they are replacement theology. So they're saying they're Jews. And they're not. You have in Israel the branches of the Hasidim that mingle with Kabbalistic magic and Talmudism, not scriptural Judaism. But see, the law of Moses, the Levitical law and stuff like that, it's not a requirement for us for salvation today because he fulfilled the law. Okay, And the black Hebrew Israelites... They're of Shem. They cannot be of Israel. Okay? Sure, if they want to go under the scriptural law and do that stuff to be a Jew, whatever. But, no, the keeping of the law is not salvific. It's not a requirement. Okay? It's not a requirement. When our Lord says here, for salvation is of the Jews, he himself came from the tribe of Judah, the Hebrew tribe of Judah, under the law, 
And he definitely kept the law and is not Jesus Christ the door of salvation. Do you see? Scripturally, a Jew who is someone who keeps the law. And we saw in Esther chapter 8, someone could, grab, could join themselves to the Hebrew to be a Jew. But that would require them taking upon themselves, as we read in Isaiah 56, for them keeping the co uh, covenants given unto Israel and the Sabbaths, meaning going under the law. And Paul, for today, talks all about those who want to bring you under the law to bring you into bondage because you don't need to keep the law to be saved or say stay saved. Okay, they, they cleared this up in Acts chapter 15. Okay, now let's continue. Verse 23, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. And to John Hagee, who said that Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah, Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto them, unto thee, am he. I am he. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verses 24 under verse 30. Salvation is of the Jews. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Our Lord sprang from Judah. Uh, those who are Jews are what? They keep the covenants and the uh, Sabbaths. They are under the Mosaic Levitical law. That's what a scriptural Jew is. You have these devils today, the black Hebrew Israelites saying that they are Jews. They're not keeping the scriptural law. Of course they're not. They're not even Hebrews. They can't be because they descend from Ham. The British Israelites. You know those guys at the uh, Shepherd's Chapel with their satanic serpent seed doctrine, okay? British, British Israelites, okay? They can't be Hebrews. Why? Because they're of Japheth. The Japanese, the Chinese, the American Indian here in America, the Native American Indian, they are of Shem. But they're not Hebrews. Why? Because Hebrews, Hebrew is first was given unto who? Abram, who became Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac thy seed shall be called. Isaac begat Esau and Jacob. He loved, God loved Jacob and hated Esau. From Jacob became the 12 patriarchs. Israel, okay? Israel is a prince of God and with man, okay? A prince with God and with man. Okay? Okay, are you with me? So, someone who is a Jew, according to Scripture, is someone who is under the law and keeping the law. And we're not required to keep the law today. But see, our Lord makes a distinction. Salvation is of the Jews. So, are there Jews? Then you might be asking, well, are there Jews today? Well, yes. Because scripturally, who is the law given on to? Come on, you know this by now. The Hebrews, right? The Hebrews. But the Hebrews are scattered abroad. So those who are in Israel, whose direct descendants can be traced back onto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, those are Hebrews. Jews. Because unto them were given the ordinances and laws and stuff like that. Okay? Are you with me? See, and the 12 tribes are going to be reestablished during the time of Jacob's trouble. Because, show me today, 
where specifically the entire tribe of Judah is in Israel, where the entire tribe of Naphtali is, where the entire uh, tribe of Gad is, where the entire tribe of Ashur is. You can't do it. Why? Because as in Scripture, they have been dispersed, the diaspora. God brought Israel back as a nation and um, correlation with uh, Ezekiel chapter 36, he brought them back in unbelief. But after we, the church of the living God, get redeemed, resurrected, caught up, that distinction of the 12 tribes is going to return. It's not there yet. But scripturally, someone who is a Jew keeps the laws and, and is under the law. And the law was given on to the Hebrews. So for us to refer to the Hebrews as Jews is not inaccurate. But we have to remember what scripturally a Jew actually is. And that a Jew, as our Lord just said, is equated unto the Hebrews because he is a, he, he was a, he, he is a Hebrew himself. He came from Judah, see? You see how warped and twisted these Catholic Jesuit devils are making this simple thing to be perverted for so many of you? Mark chapter 7, verses 24 and verse 30. And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him, and came and fell at his feet, and the woman was a Greek. Yeah. A Greek of Japheth. A Syrophrician by nation. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, it's to the Jew first and also to the Greek, who are the Jews? The Jews are those who are under the law. Who is the law given unto? The Hebrews. So in Scripture, when you see Jews, it's reference unto the Hebrew. But then again, keeping in mind about Esther, chapter 8, many became Jews, strangers, who were not of the Hebrews, but they went under the law, giving us the, telling us what a Jew truly is. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it onto the dogs. Yes, dear friends, our Lord Jesus Christ referred to us Gentiles there in that passage, dogs. See, that's, that's the whole thing about Romans chapter 11. See, we are grafted into their tree. Our privilege given to us by grace through faith is that we are grafted in as the wild olive tree into the natural olive tree which is the chosen people, the apple of God's eye, the Jew, who are the Hebrews. See. And she answered and said unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. For the devil has gone out of thy daughter. See, in that moment, a Gentile, a Greek, had more faith than the people whom he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto. There were those whom he chose like his disciples, and there were, amen, those who followed him as their king, yes. But for this statement, he was sent to the Jew first, called her a dog, but yet he healed her because of that statement of faith. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 3, then we will be done. You can see why we did this in two videos, <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 on to verse 9. Now, some people like to come here to Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 on to verse 9, to try to equate that God has done with Israel. No. No. No, no, no. 
Israel, the Jew, the Hebrew, is the apple of God's eye. And we are, as we, we, previous video, went through Romans chapter 11, okay? Okay, he's not done with Israel. But Jeshurun, highly favored, kicked, grew facts, fat, okay, wax fat, excuse me. Why? Because of the favor from the Lord. To whom much is given, much is required, okay? So, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 4 and verse 9, and then we will be done. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, but to the house of Israel, who are Hebrews, who are Jews. Not to many people of a strange speech, and of an hard language, whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent them, sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. Similar unto that Gentile woman. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are imputed and hard-hearted. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant, harder than flint, have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And because of their rebellion and their rejection of their king, us Gentiles were grafted in to make them jealous, to bring them on to their king. Okay? And when we, the church of the living God, which is comprised of Jew and Gentile, get redeemed, caught up, okay, before the time of Jacob's trouble, hence the time of Jacob's trouble, when God is going to turn his sole attention back to his people, the Jew, Israel, the Hebrew. God is not cast... We read... In the previous video, we read in Romans chapter 11, God is not done with his people. We've been grafted in. We have not replaced. Okay? Dear friends, a Jew, according to Scripture, see, a Jew, according to the Talmud, and according to the Kabbalah, and Catholics, okay, what tradition calls a Jew and what God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, through his perfect and errant, given by inspiration word, the authorized version of the scriptures, what he calls a Jew is something different. And we have seen, last time we're going to go through this, Abram was first called a Hebrew. Abram became Abraham, denoting a change, a new creature. Abraham was given a promise by God that one of his own bowels was going to be his heir. He and Sarah, because he listened to his wife Sarah, similar to Adam had listened to Eve, took upon themselves to go into an Egyptian, uh, a Hamite, to bring about God's promise. God didn't bless that. He, he blessed Isaac, or um, Ishmael, yes, made a nation of Ishmael, but it was in Isaac. Thy seed shall be called the promised son. And since they made, since uh, Abraham and Sarah wanted to bring about God's promises out of their own efforts from the flesh through Hagar, okay, a union between Shem and Ham, God didn't, that, that wasn't, you know, honored. I mean, he did bless Ishmael. Yes, he made him a nation. Yes. And of Ishmael is descended the Muslims of today, okay? And the Muslims, like I told you, are quick to say, we're the firstborn of Abraham. And yes, they are. But it is in Isaac thy seed shall be called. The promised son, Isaac, okay? Isaac, the promised son, born of Sarah herself, of the seed of Abraham, Isaac begat, Esau and Jacob. Esau gave away his birthright for a bowl of soup. His God was his belly. Because he did that, God hated 
Esau. Not his sin. He hated Esau, but he loved Jacob. Jacob, the one who takes his brother by the heel, supplanter, obtained God's promise through lying, through supplanting. But then Jacob wrestled with God, God himself, our Lord Jesus Christ, precarnate form. And in that wrestling, God blessed him and called, changed his name from Jacob, supplanter, that him who takes his brother by the heel, onto Israel, a prince with God and man. Okay? So a Hebrew is a descendant from Abraham. Abram, onto Abraham, okay? That's what a Hebrew is. And onto the Hebrews, Israel, Jacob, the nation of Israel, was given the law. So when our Lord says salvation is of the Jew, again, he himself came of Judah. Okay, you with me? You with me? Under the law, and Jesus Christ himself made the law honorable. He, he fulfilled the law. So a Jew, as we've already looked at in Isaiah chapter 56, a stranger, someone who is not of the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? The chosen line from Shem, um, someone who is not of that line under the Old Testament, under the law, wanted to be saved right with God, it was faith and works. That means they had to go under the law. They became Jews by going under the law. So being a Jew is equated with someone who keeps the law. And today, salvifically, there is neither Jew nor Greek, is there? Culturally, in Israel, the Hebrews, keeping their Jewish traditions, and about that, about that, Jewish, that's the one thing I almost forgot. Almost forgot. Jewish. There's only one time the word Jewish appears in Scripture. Titus, chapter 1. Titus, chapter 1. Titus, chapter 1. Uh, verses 10 on to verse 16. Then, then will be done. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Circumcision was given unto who? Abraham. And circumcision was part also of what? The law. And the law was given unto who? The Hebrews. Okay? Whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, so bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Jewish fables. What is a Jewish fable? Oh, the Talmud. What is a Jewish fable? Kabbalah. Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. So Jewish is something that is pertaining onto the law. But the Jewish fables, the Talmud, the Kabbalah, and, and notice, and commandments of men, Catholics and their catechism. Okay? Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. So, that is going to be it for this two-part video. Got another big video that's going to be coming here in a couple of days um, that a brother of mine from North, North Dakota had a part in helping with. This two-part video, a dearly, dearly beloved sister um, planted the seed on this one. So, 
that is going to be it for this video. And hopefully these two videos, this one video, uh, two parts, will put to rest for those of you who question what a Jew is. And I know there are a lot of you out there who cannot endure sound doctrine and will not make it through almost four hours worth of video telling you what a Jew is. But if you do make it through this, from beginning, beginning in the first video on to this video, okay? If you do make it through this, hopefully this will show to you what a Jew is according to Scripture. And to refer to the Hebrews today as Jews, they were the ones who were given the law, but they reject their king. And a Jew is someone who is under the law and keeps the law. And the law was given unto the who? The Hebrews. So it's not an error to refer to the Hebrews as Jews. Okay? So. That is going to be it for this video. <laughs> My, uh, our best friend had often said, you need to make a mini-series one time, Brad. <laughs> But it's 12.30 now, and uh, I forget when I started this, a little about 8.30 this morning. So I'm um, going to upload the first video and then this video. Thank you so much, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, for all your prayers, your gifts. Thank you for all that you have done. We love you, and we pray for so many of you. Keep your focus on exposing the works of the enemy. Roman Catholicism, the, the uh, Catholic Church, Satan's Church, and her army, the Jesuit Order. And don't get taken away with vain ramblings and st such like that. Keep your eye focused on what it needs to be focused on. Don't let yourself be distracted by these wicked devils. Thank you for watching if you do. We love you. We'll see you in the next video.